It's usually uh, the only one. On, uh, I'm usually the only one on the road at 3 a.m. or so, but I was uh, busy with a lot of other visitors driving up and well, down the 15 here. I know morning. why, probably, because today's the day many people are heading yeah. out of town for 4th of July or coming here because <laughs> this is the place to be, Netta, that's for sure. Surprised. And uh, the weather's not going to disappoint. L I mean, look at that. Look at that behind you. Right? I mean, look, well, I do not blame you for coming into town. Uh, and yes, it is already very noticeably busier for these early morning hours. Uh, you know, it's funny when it's a vacation you don't mind starting early right it's a little different when you have to wake up early and get to work but there's an extra skip in people's step when they do get to go on a vacation look at this beautiful view of that sun coming up only areas where you'll see that sunrise would be right here at the top of some of our mountains of course because we have the marine layer you saw that over del mar we see it east of our mountains as well that's going to keep the coast fairly cool in the 70s sunny and 90s for inland spots also also track the chance of thunderstorms in our mountains and deserts for today a check of traffic this also shows it's fairly busy out on the roads right now at 70 at the 76 right here we do have some major slowing at the 15 this is where a crash just happened about 20 minutes or so ago so you're already seeing some of that back up there and then taking you out to east county this is near the El Cajon area La Mesa the I-8 on Alvarado Road there is a metal dolly that they are working to clear and then a couple hit and runs in the South Bay Chula Vista on the 805 and the 5 working to clear those scenes as well Stella Eric. Netta, thank you. Our state's authority on high school sports is laying down the law over the tortilla throwing incident that made national headlines. CIF stripped Coronado High School of its championship, and that's not all. News 8 7 Ronnie live in Coronado with reaction to all this, as well as how this decision is impacting the entire athletics department. Evan? And good morning to both of you, Eric Stella. Just within the last half hour or so, Coronado has started waking up. We've seen some joggers running by, uh, giving us their opinions, their thoughtful opinions while making their way uh, through uh, the island. And uh, we've also, of course, heard a lot on uh, both sides of people supporting the Coronado basketball team, saying this was uh, what they call an injustice. There are also people on the side of Escondido uh, Union High School District that say that this finally provides a little bit of closure. But regardless, CIF stripping the Coronado basketball team of of their regional championship. This was a seven part decision that the CIF made after a more than week long investigation. And uh, of course, those uh, opinions running high on both sides now. It's a very disappointing outcome for for the players, uh, for the team, for the school and really for our entire community. I think at the end of the day is just simply um, where we go from there. How, how do we how do we learn? How do we how do we mend? How do we teach? How do we find a solution? So running through that full decision made by the California Interscholastic Federation, or CIF, it strips Coronado High of their regional title. It puts the team on probation for three seasons. That's until 2024. The team won't be able to host postseason contests for two years and until two things happen as well. First, the CIF wants them to complete a sportsmanship workshop, and that's not only the players, but also administrators, coaches, athletic directors. That workshop will include racial and cultural sensitivity training, They'll also need to participate in what the CIF calls game management training. Now, Coronado Unified has responded, saying that they're evaluating a possible appeal to the CIF decision. The mayor of Coronado, Richard Bailey, says the CIF, quote, really displayed a lack of courage, end quote, in stripping the team of their title. Now, the superintendent of the Escondido Union uh, Unified High School District says that this, quote, provides us with a foundation for finding closure and a path forward. Uh, that, of course, shows that just on both sides, of this that there is a discussion of hopefully moving forward from this uh, regardless the man who was responsible for bringing those tortillas to that game says that he never had the intention of players throwing those tortillas at the opposing team he says he brought those tortillas to the game it was something that they did at his alma mater uh, UC Santa Barbara and that it was a way to celebrate the victory of the team and that was it was never intended to be a uh, racial incident however of course now this seven part series coming down from the CIF a decision not only stripping that team of their championship but also requiring uh, the racial and cultural sensitivity training along the way if you'd like to read more of the CIF's decision you can head to our website that's cbsa.com Eric Stella back to you Evan thank you
Bill Cosby is back home as a free man this morning after a stunning court reversal. Pennsylvania Supreme Court overturned the comedian's sectional, sexual assault conviction on a technicality. Now, the court said Cosby should have never been charged because a former district attorney made a deal with the 83-year-old. Gloria Allred represented many of the women in the Cosby case, and she says the decision is devastating for the accusers who bravely testified. I want everyone to know that I do believe that this was a very important fight for justice. And even though the court did overturn the conviction, it was on technical grounds. It did not vindicate Bill Cosby's conduct. Cosby, how does it feel to be home? So far, prosecutors have not said whether they will appeal. Today, President Biden will visit the site in Surfside, Florida, the site of the deadly condo collapse. At least 18 people have died, including two children. Crews are using search dogs, electric saws, and sonar equipment as they sift through the rubble. A team of experts gathering evidence in hopes of finding the cause of the last week's disaster. The team will also look at whether building codes need to be changed. New this morning, top Trump Organization executive Alan Weisselberg has surrendered ahead of expected charges on tax crimes. The Manhattan District Attorney's Office and the New York Attorney General's Office together have obtained indictments against the Trump Organization and Weisselberg. The charges center around alleged off-the-books compensation to Weisselberg and possibly others. Filling up your gas tank will now cost a little more. The state's gas tax increase is now in effect. And this comes as the 4th of July holiday travel weekend officially kicks off today. News 8's Chris Grow live in Mission Valley with what we need to know here. I filled up yesterday, and Chris, I'm at the point where I don't even want to look at what the total is. I just get in my car, and I drive away, and I deal with it. <laughs> what you got to do is you got to just put the card in, put the pump in the gas tank, and then just look away, right? That's how a lot of people are feeling right now, and it's sort of bad timing, this gas tax increase. Now, it's not a lot. It's 0.6 cents per gallon, so you're not going to notice a difference, but the thing that people are pointing out right now is that it's coming at a time in which gas prices are historically high across not only California, but the nation, and there's a variety of factors playing into that, but let's cover why it is that we're seeing yet another increase here specifically when it comes to the state of California and the taxes imposed per gallon. Now, when all added up, we are seeing a 51.1 cent tax per gallon at the pump. That's including all the previous tax rates and other fees. That makes our state's total taxes and other charges on gasoline, though, the highest in the country. Now, gas prices across the country, again, already high. And the reason we're seeing this automatic increase is because of a bill already passed by the people and voters of California called SB1. That was that gas tax law signed into uh, effect in 2017. It incrementally raises the fuel excise tax each year to help road and bridge repairs. Now, a lot of people are wondering, though, we've got the 4th of July weekend. A lot of people are traveling on the roads and not necessarily traveling by air because of COVID-19, the pandemic. They want to make sure uh, that they're being safe. Not everybody's that comfortable yet. So how will this impact travel. Maybe not as much as you think, but drivers will have to get a little creative. Take a listen to AAA. Uh, not a huge difference. You know, that point uh, uh, six cents per gallon, uh, overall a little bit more than eight cents per fill up. But, you know, everybody likes to save money and, you know, we want to see these gas prices moving lower, certainly not higher, especially heading into a long holiday weekend when a lot of people are going to be hitting the roads. So something that travelers might do, uh, for instance, in order to save money because they're going to be paying so much here at the pump, they could potentially bring food with them instead of eating out on their road trips or maybe try to see if they can stay with relatives or friends instead of those hotels. But what you can also do is download one of those handy apps like Gas Buddy or others. In fact, we have a link to those websites. Go to our website, cbs8.com, click on that story link, and we have a little bit of a helpful link tool there for you to use so you can try to map out which gas stations actually have the lowest of the already high prices. Eric and Stella. All right, Chris, thanks. Let's get it over to Netta now with a check on our forecast.
Yeah, so a lot of people heading the, on the roads already, as you guys mentioned, uh, and it's because of this right here. They're coming our way. Welcome to San Diego, you guys. I don't blame you for wanting to head to our beautiful beaches. A huge reason why we live here, of course. This is the view in Carlsbad where you see the overcast skies. We have a few surfers out in the water in these early morning hours. Uh, certainly, they want to get in on it before it gets too crowded. So your surf forecast will be important for the next few days as many tourists come to town. Uh, do you want to point now, our risk of rip currents will be high, so we want you to have a very safe holiday weekend. Uh, check with lifeguards on the safest places to swim and go surfing. Now, we do have two to four foot waves today, up to five footers, though, through this weekend. So there's a bit of a swell that will be building water temperature in the upper 60s. Uh, even right now, you saw the overcast skies across Carlsbad. Well, all of us are waking up to that marine layer, and visibility is now at zero in Ramona. So that's where the clouds are sitting at that elevation. You'll drive right through them. Look at our relative humidity across the board, though. That's pretty high. Even in Julian, you're at 47%. Our view from our mountains is so pretty right now. San Miguel's camera looking towards the east. This one, just a, just a gorgeous sight to start your day with, right? Our sun's coming up. We have those lower clouds out there. Watching for that chance of thunderstorms, it does not seem as likely today. Yesterday, we did see a little bit popping up in Mount Laguna. Let's get your traffic filled in. Uh, we do have a little bit of activity, especially right here along the 76. You see that slow down the yellows and oranges. This is actually on the 15 at the 76. And so if you are headed on the 15 southbound, you may run into a bit of slowing. So take your time. If you do want to go around that, that may be a quicker way to get around. Taking you to the South Bay, there are a few areas of slower traffic right there on National City, through National City on the 5. But there are a couple hit and runs. So this one at H Street, I believe they've moved the vehicle over to the nearby trolley station as they work to figure out what happened. Happen. This one also a hit and run at on the 805 at Palomar Street, uh, but as you see, no slowing because of it. So it looks like they've moved it out of the way. Stella and Eric.